In this video, I'm going to talk about my top three favorite ETFs that are a great addition to any portfolio as core staples because of the great returns, the low fees, and how easy they are to invest in. These are the ETFs that I consider to be my crockpot investing. They're set it and forget it. You buy them, you hold them, you keep buying them, you don't worry about them. And many years from now, you wonder how you ended up with all this money. The three ETFs I'm going to talk about are so boring, they could put a person to sleep. And you might be like, oh, that's lame. I want something exciting. I want a 4,000% return by tomorrow. If you're looking for something that is going to stop your heart, uh, this video is probably not for you. Sometimes, honestly, being bored with investing is good. Being bored means that your portfolio is not super risky, that it's not super volatile, and you have investments that if you forgot your password to log into your brokerage account and you fall, forgot it for 30 years and then you logged in 30 years from now, you could feel pretty confident that you're going to end up up with significantly more money than you invested with today. And so that's what I'm going to be focusing on. If you're here for that, you've come to the right place and let's get started with ETF number one. The first ETF is XAW. This is a BlackRock iShares fund ETF and you can find it under the ticker XAW on the Toronto Stock Exchange and it trades in Canadian dollars, which is really nice. And it is the iShares core all country world X Canada ETF. It's a real mouthful, but basically what it means is it holds everything except for Canada. So in this ETF, you get US exposure, you get global portfolio diversification, so many different countries, and you also get access to emerging markets, which are economies around the world that are sort of up and coming. The management fee of this ETF is 0.2%, which is awesome, that's really low. So that means if you have $10,000 invested in this ETF, after one year your fees will be $20 and this is not something that you actually have to think about paying yourself it just comes out automatically in the returns from the ETF so um, although you Although it's not something you have to think about, it is a fee that's kind of baked into the ETF, but it's really, really low, so it's really nothing to worry about. XAW holds 9,043 stocks within it, so when you buy one unit of XAW, you are owning tiny slices of 9,000 different stocks. And within XAW, it's an ETF that holds other smaller, more focused ETFs within it, and that's one of the reasons why it's so well diversified. So if you see this chart over here, you can see all all the different ETFs that are within XAW. So you have IVV, your S&P 500 ETF, you have XEF, which is your MISI IFI IMI ETF, you sound like a Teletubby, but that's basically um, small, mid and large cap companies in developed markets. You have your emerging markets ETF, and then you have some more S&P ETFs, small, mid and large cap, and then a little bit of cash in there. So it gives you a really nice mix of of different companies from different markets around the world. And in this graphic here, you can see the different countries that you are directly investing in through purchasing units of XAW. So USA is the largest market, and then you have Japan, China, UK, France, all of these different countries that you don't have to actually go and purchase individual stocks in on their exchanges, which would really complicate things. It's all done directly for you through the purchase of XAW. The returns that you can expect with this ETF are mainly capital appreciation over time, meaning that the unit price increases, capital gains, and you do also get a small distribution of a 1.46% yield, which you'll get paid cash in Canadian dollars, which you can then use to reinvest in more XAW or put it into something else is really nice that it's in Canadian dollars because then you don't have to worry about converting currency to any of these foreign currencies it's all kind of already done for you within the ETF as far as the total return for this ETF I'm gonna pop a chart up here you can see that the total return by year so the one-year return 22% three-year 9% five-year 12.45% you can see that $10,000 invested five years ago in 2016 would be worth about $18,000 today so that's almost a doubling not quite in five years and that's pretty good the key with this ETF and actually all the ETFs I'm going to talk about today are you actually have to buy and hold them you can't buy and then sell and miss out on time it's really the buying and holding and adding to these ETFs over time that are going to give you the greatest return but Almost a doubling in five years is a pretty good return, especially when it's completely passive. So overall, that's XAW. I hold it myself. 
This is a great ETF if you are someone who maybe is over-concentrated in Canadian equities and you are looking for some more global portfolio diversification, but you don't wanna mess around with investing in different markets. You just want one ETF that's gonna take care of your global diversification with you. The fees are low, the returns are great, and it's crockpot investing. You just need to buy and hold. So let's get on to ETF number two. Next up, we have VFV. This is Vanguard's version of the S&P 5 500 index ETF. You can find it under the Toronto Stock Exchange as VFV and it's traded in Canadian dollars. And what this ETF tries to track is the US's largest 500 companies by market cap. And so large cap companies are companies that are worth over $10 billion. Uh, the management fee for this ETF is 0.08%, which is ultra low. That means on a $10,000 investment into this ETF, you're paying $8 a year in fees. I mean, the fees are getting so low, like they're getting pretty close to zero, but the fact that it's so low is awesome. And one of the reasons that the fee is so low is because it's a passive ETF. So it's just tracking an index. There's no active management component and that helps to keep the fees down. As far as the returns you can expect, again, it's mainly capital appreciation over time and you do get a small distribution of about 0.27 cents per unit uh, paid out quarterly. So I'm going to pop a chart up here on the screen and you can see the returns that have been gotten in the last couple years for this ETF. From 2016 to 2020, you've got 8, 13, 3, 24 and 15 and you might say oh my gosh these are kind of all over the place but whenever you're investing in equities meaning 100% stocks you can expect that amount of volatility it's just kind of the name of the game with investing in equities so if you have a long time horizon and you can stomach a bit of volatility and you don't need this money in the short term then don't let the volatility scare you it's kind of part and parcel with investing in stocks this ETF holds 509 stocks it's no surprise there it's the S&P 500 and the top holdings in this ETF are probably no surprise they're all the big cap companies that everybody knows Apple Amazon Microsoft Google those are held in the greatest weighting in the, the, this ETF. Another way to look at it is what is the sector weighting of this ETF? You can see that tech makes up the vast percentage of 27.4%. You also have a good amount in healthcare, consumer discretionary, financials, communication. And one of the things that's really nice about investing in the US is there's much more breadth and depth of different sectors. So if you were to look at a Canadian version of VFE, meaning sort of the top companies in Canada, you would notice that a lot of the sectors, there's very few sectors that make up the vast majority of the Canadian economy. So it's not as well diversified. And that's one of the reasons I really like VFE because by investing in this one ETF, you get exposure to so many different sectors compared to if you just invested in the Canadian economy. And you can see that $10,000 invested five years ago today would be worth $20,000. So that's a doubling in five years. That's an awesome Awesome return for a passive investment. So I think VFE is an awesome, low cost, great return ETF, especially good for beginners, especially if you just are starting to dip your toe in investing outside of the Canadian market. Gets you comfortable with riding the ups and downs of the stock market. When you have an ETF that you know is holding 500 different stocks, it becomes psychologically a lot easier to stomach the downturns rather than if you bought one individual stock stock and that stock has gone down you know you start second guessing yourself is it ever going to recover did I make a mistake but when you're buying a broad market it becomes a little bit easier to weather the downturn so I think this is a good not only just core stock for any portfolio but it's also a really good training wheels stock if you're just getting started investing outside of Canada and because it's in Canadian dollars it makes it really easy as well you don't have to start converting currency or opening US dollar trading accounts the cons with this ETF are that you are only holding the largest companies in the US and you are not getting any exposure at all to small and mid cap companies so if you think about it all large cap companies at one point were small cap and then they've grown exponentially over time to get to the point where they're now a large cap company. And so by investing only in VFE, you're missing out on that 
exponential growth of those kind of small companies that are lurking in the background that maybe five or 10 years from now might be large cap companies. But that brings me into my next ETF that takes care of this problem. And let's get into ETF number three. And the last one I have for you guys is VUN. And this is Vanguard's version of a US total stock market index. You can find it on the Toronto Stock Exchange under the symbol VUN, V-U-N. Unlike VFE, which holds only the top 500 companies in the US, VUN holds all 3,000 and something stocks within the US market. So you get within this ETF exposure to those small and mid cap companies. The stocks in this ETF are weighted by their market cap weighting. So the large cap stocks, which are the same stocks that are held in VFE, are weighted most heavily in VUN because they take up the largest percent of the US market by market cap. So within this ETF, you hold 3,669 different stocks. The top holdings are going to be pretty much the same as the ones I showed you in VFE, but the bottom holdings are where the difference is going to be between VFE and VUN. So the way you can think about it is 75% of VUN is VFV. So these two ETFs are very similar and I hesitated including both of them because they are so similar, but I like each of them equally for different reasons. So 25% of VUN is what's missing in VFE. That's your small and mid cap companies. So those are those companies that are working in the background quietly and a couple of them hopefully will become much larger cap companies in the future and that you can benefit from that exponential return of those small and medium companies increasing in market cap. The management fee for this ETF is 0.15%, again, super low, and that's about $15 in fees on a $10,000 investment in the ETF. The returns are excellent as well. Because it is so similar to VFE, you can expect similar type returns. 2016 to 2020, you've got nine, 13, two and a half, 23, and 18. Very similar returns to VFE. And again, you're going to get that same type of volatility because it is 100% invested in stocks. As well, you can have a look at the five-year chart. So $10,000 invested in 2016 today would be just over $20,000. And again, that's a doubling in five years. That's a really, really nice return for relatively low involvement in terms of you having to pay attention to things. A lot of returns in investing are often, we often talk about doubling time. So how long does this investment take to double. There's a way you can quickly gauge the returns that an investment has generated. So a five year doubling time, I don't think most people are gonna be mad at, especially when it's as easy to invest in as these ETFs. The main benefit with this ETF is with one purchase, you instantly own a little piece of the entire US stock market. The returns are great, the fees are low, it's easy to invest in. The cons of one are can't think of any. Well, that's all for today, guys. Thanks for watching. Like the video, subscribe if you're new. Let me know in the comments which ETFs are your favorite. Maybe there's some I haven't heard of before, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.